stay-at-home dad Watching Disney movies he never had His daughter digs through all the VHS Crushing the classics in a princess dress Informed like Scuttle, Kurt's got your ticket Making it real like Jiminy Cricket Most are off the Captain Hook, but if the Tweedledum He'll be taking more shots than Bambi's mom Leaves him raised like Simba or cracked like the Beast Dishes He'll show you a whole new world You won't need free wish Stay at home, Disney The march through the Disney Channel continues this month with Geppetto. We're asked to join them after the movie for a special music video from this very movie. Pass. We start with uh, When You Wish Upon a Star and we see Pinocchio and my heart is warm. But then we hear Drew Carey saying, well, this isn't a story about Pinocchio but a story about his dad, a Geppetto. And my heart goes cold. We start with a family running to a toy store to get there when it opens. They want to be there first. They break into song and then the whole town joins in. Everyone wants to get first dibs of the new toys. I guess Geppetto has been cooking up a new batch of toys for these last few months and it's first come first serve when he throws open the doors today. We meet Geppetto which is Drew Carey in a bad wig. And he opens his doors and the kids and families sing their way in. There's one toy on display, but Geppetto says, ah, that one's not for sale. And then we see, a, we see a real tabby cat. That's Figaro. That's wonderful. I wonder if that cat knew it was performing such an iconic role. Like when it was licking its own butt, it was like, I knew I crushed that audition. I'm Figaro. Uh, Carrie Sings asks, why people who shouldn't have kids have kids? And amen, brother. I don't know. I didn't need a musical Drew Carey Disney movie and I can't help but feel like I'm not the only one that feels this way. He pulls out Pinocchio and sings to it. That night the Blue Queen arrives and it's Elaine from Seidenfeld. It's funny to me that George and Elaine did multiple Disney movies and Kramer and Jerry did not. Did they? I don't think they did unless I'm missing something super obvious. I mean, I don't want to get too nerdy into like Disney lore, but I feel like it's kind of sacrilege seeing Elaine play the blue fairy in Pinocchio. She brings Pinocchio to life, and Drew Carey can't believe it, and I can't believe they made this. I should mention that though, the sets, as usual, excellent in this movie, like there are most live action Disney movies, like those are always A+. Here it's almost a shame. Geppetto just accepts that this wooden boy is now alive and tucks Pinocchio into bed, and then Pinocchio asks if they can switch beds for tonight. See, it's his first night, and it starts already. He won't go to sleep. He's asking uh, Geppetto a million questions, and I feel like this was made by someone who hates kids. Like, I see what they're trying to do here. They're trying to be funny and, like, topical, like, parenting, am I right? But watching this, it's giving me anxiety, because this, like, this is real. I don't like it. The next day, they go singing and dancing down the street. His friend says, I'm sure he'll grow up to be a fine young man. Knock on wood, and... Mm, I hate myself, but that was kind of funny. The next day, uh, he's going to stay inside with Pinocchio and he's going to teach his boy to be a toy maker. But his disappointment son doesn't want to grow up and be a toy maker. He wants to drive trains. Again, this is written by someone with tremendous, like, son passing down the, uh, the family business issues here. He wants to rename his shop Geppetto and Son. Pinocchio bumbles and breaks stuff, and Geppetto says, Tomorrow, you're going to school. The next day, Pinocchio says, I slept like a log. And sleepy Geppetto, who didn't have a good sleep, goes, You are a log. Uh, he drops Pinocchio off at school, and he goes back home and goes to sleep, but there's immediate trouble at the school, and he's on his way back. We meet Stromboli on the way, and he's kind of skinny, but he's still just as unlikable. They get to school, and the fight Pinocchio started is still going on. This fight must have been like 20 full minutes by this time. Pinocchio is an absolute warrior. I want to see this entire 20 minute schoolyard scrap, right? Like that is impressive stamina. The teacher tells Carrie to take Pinocchio home and Carrie flirts with the teacher. So Pinocchio is not in trouble anymore. Carrie asks what happened and Pinocchio says, I did what you told me to. I just imitated the other kids. And the other kids thought he was mocking them. The teacher tells him, be careful. Because uh, lost kids like him end up at Pleasure Island, foreshadowing. Stromboli realizes Pinocchio is a little wooden boy. He sees dollar signs in his eyes. Uh, they fight, like Car Carrie and Pinocchio. And he says, I'll bet Stromboli doesn't yell at his son. And Carrie goes, fine, then go live with Stromboli. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Carrie tries to find the blue fairy and Elaine eventually comes. Geppetto says his wish was defective. This is some monkey paw. <laughs> Elaine now sings a song about how everyone is greedy and doesn't think their wish is through. 
Oh, she sings, when you get the thing for which you've yearned, then that yearning has returned. Mm. Great line. It's true. It's true. Geppetto dances with the blue fairy. And there's something about Drew Carey dancing with Julia Louis-Dreyfus that seems so above Drew Carey and so below Elaine. You know, like, one of them tells that story daily and the other has never mentioned it once. Geppetto comes home and there's a note that Pinocchio left and joined the circus with Stromboli like he threatened. Geppetto goes to the circus tent and he sees Pinocchio singing and dancing and everyone cheers. Carey sees that Pinocchio is actually a big star and he's liking it up there and he goes, maybe this is a better life for Pinocchio. Stromboli's in the back counting his money and Pinocchio is in a cage. He tells Pinocchio, we have to lock up our valuables. Uh, Geppetto comes in looking for Pinocchio and Stromboli makes up a lie and tells him the little wooden boy ran away to a big city. After Geppetto leaves, he checks on Pinocchio's cage and he's escaped. Stromboli runs out back just in time to see Pinocchio hop in a train car on its way to Pleasure Island. Stromboli goes back in and yells at his old ventriloquist dummy. Stromboli sings and dances around his tent and all his puppets and toys join in. Like, like he's not making the move. They're, they're alive and they're dancing with him. This is the real movie. This is a horror story. Make this movie. Drew is out looking for Pinocchio and he runs into the Blue Fairy again. And she's like, you're responsible for what you created. Again with the projecting. Then he runs into a terrible magician who wants to follow in his father's footsteps. But he's a bumbler. And Carrie sees the other side of it. He's made a horrible mistake pushing his dreams on Pinocchio. That guy I think was Wayne Brady. So there's like two whose line is an alumni and no one outside of like Saskatchewan, maybe Manitoba cares about that. Uh, we get a violin version of When You Wish Upon a Star and I'll be honest, when I started this journey like what, 233 weeks ago watching VHS tapes with my daughter, this song had no value to me. Now I don't want to say it makes me cry, but it does not make me cry now. There's a weird part where there's a kid and an old man who have a machine that makes children. What is happening? So this is another lesson, more lessons. Uh, this can make perfect kids. If you want a boy, you can get a boy that's a perfect child and it won't ever run away. I'm... The f is Jiminy Cricket in this movie? The machine kicks out a 10 year old girl who breaks into song and dances and sings about cleaning and doing her best. This turns into like a 10 minute flash mob now in the middle of town. These last 27 minutes, Carrie has learned not to push what he wants on his kid and that he doesn't want a perfect kid. Pinocchio, however, is on his way to Pleasure Island. Now the Blue Fairy shows back up for like what a fourth time, oh my God. And she sings a song. They could have cut this entire half hour out of this movie easily. Finally, we're at Pleasure Island. Oh my God, is that Usher? I gotta look this up. That was Usher. Oh, topical. That's Super Bowl, whatever, like last month's 2024 halftime show. Usher, why didn't he perform this song? It's too bad all these kids got turned into donkeys because Pleasure Island looks like a lot of fun. Pinocchio takes off running and, and Drew, 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 Drew he, what? I was going to make fun of Drew Carey running. I was not. Carey goes into the stables and he sees all the donkeys. I know what's happening and I'm already terrified. They're getting sent through the roller coaster and they come out the other side as donkeys. Some mean guy says, all little kids make jackasses of themselves eventually. More projecting from the writers. They go through the coaster and they start turning into donkeys. I'm trying to think of some like gag or pun or double entendre about a wooden ass, but I got nothing. And the Geppetto VHS waits for no one so we continue i say that as we go to commercial break and we come back the donkeys are being exported by boat so carrie is rowing behind this giant boat of donkeys trying to save pinocchio and pinocchio the donkey jumps out of the boat and they're both swallowed by a whale all that happened in like 30 seconds pinocchio and geppetto are reunited inside monstro's tummy pinocchio is back to normal because they explain when he jumped into the water the donkey part quote washed away just an observation here, Disney. No one wants to see a 20 minute flash mob of dancing kids in a kid making machine. They want to see Geppetto rescuing Pinocchio on the rocky seas and getting swallowed by a whale. He keeps getting Pinocchio to lie so his nose grows and it tickles the hanging thing in the back of the whale's throat. His, it's a, it's a uvula. I spent most of my life legit thinking that thing was called a weenus. I'm serious, I'm not trying to make a joke. I have no idea who told me that it was a weenus, but it's a uvula. They make it back and Stromboli shows up and he has a contract for Pinocchio that Pinocchio signed. The contract is for Pinocchio to work with Stromboli for the next 100 years or until he dies. Carrie says, you could take anything instead. Stromboli says, no. Carrie says, you could take everything. He's like, really? And he looks around. Carrie sings about how all he needs is his kid. Nothing else matters. And damn it, Disney. 
this ending landed. Of all the projecting the writers have added about how much kids suck and being a parent sucks, this song, this song is, is parenthood. Sorry to sound like an a**hole, but he sings about how once you're a parent, nothing else you have matters more than your kids. It's true. Stromboli then has a change of heart and he tries running away with Pinocchio. Uh, Blue Fairy shows up and is like, I got nothing. A contract is a contract. Elaine then uses her magic though and makes Pinocchio into a real 100% flesh and bone kid, making him useless to Stromboli who wanted the wooden boy. We get a slow-mo run as Carrie and Pinocchio charge into each other's arms. We get credits and yeah, Wayne Brady was that failed uh, magician. Look at him taking time off from being a failed comedian to play a failed magician. Come on, I love Wayne Brady. That was a joke, people. Saskatchewan, Manitoba people are so mad at me right now. Like the only people that ever watched Whose Line Is It? Also, I can make this movie awesome just by changing one word, okay? Disney's Geppetto, starring Drew Carey? No. Disney's Geppetto, starring Jim Carey.